Welcome to our Crossroads virtual service. I'm Anna, I'm the children's pastor here. I'm so glad that you are joining us for this third week of Advent. Here at our church, we like to celebrate Advent by lighting these candles and they each represent a different aspect of Christmas that is meant to draw us nearer and closer to God and prepare our hearts for the grand celebration of Christmas. In the previous two weeks, we've lit the candles of hope and peace, and we've shared verses about them and thoughts about them. This week, we light the candle of joy. This season is meant to be a time of great joy for us as we remember the birth of our Savior and what that means for us in terms of our salvation. This season, we have the opportunity to take joy in spending time with friends and family, even if it's only virtually. If you're finding it difficult to find joy this year or in this season, I encourage you to pray to God and ask Him to soften your heart and bring to mind every reason for joy. Then take that and rejoice and worship the Lord for those gifts. Perhaps right now we could take a moment and share some Christmas joy with someone virtually. We like to send someone a text message and let them know that we're thinking of them and care for them, that we miss them. If you really are bold, you can even send them a link to our Crossroads YouTube channel and invite them to worship with us on Sundays. We also gather together virtually after our Sunday services at 1130 on our Crossroads Facebook page. And we just share life and pray with each other and talk with each other and worship there. We hope that you'll join us for that. Come now and let's prepare our hearts. Let's be ready to worship God. Will you please pray with me for this service? God, I thank you for what you're doing here today. Thank you for the hope that you bring and the peace that you bring. And thank you for the joy that you fill us with, God. I pray that each of us would find our hearts soft and that we would remember all the reasons that we have to rejoice, Lord. I pray for this service, God, that you would go before us and that you would prepare the way, that you would, that you would speak to us individually. God, I thank you for what you're doing here and thank you for this church body. Bless us for having been part of our church today, Lord. I pray all these things for your glory and in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you afterwards at our live gathering. Hi, we're the Fry family, and we want to celebrate Advent with you by lighting the candle of joy. Luke 2, 8 through 12. And there are shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in, the ma in a manger. We hope that you're remembering to find joy in this season.
baby's cry is the sound of love Come down, come down
Hi, I'm Anna. I'm the children's pastor here at Crossroads. It is my honor and I am humbled to be able to share this message with you today. I don't know how it is for you when God is trying to convey something to you, but for me, it seems as though every message, Bible verse, plan, devotion, personal conviction, and conversation that I have speaks to whatever it is that God's trying to convey to me. As such, this message has been stirring in my mind for a while now, probably before I even fully realized it. So this is the culmination of all of those thoughts and stuff inspired by all of those things and all those people. I hope that it speaks to you and is a blessing to you as much as it is to me. So we kicked off Advent season talking about how Christmas is different this year. And that is definitely true. It has been a tough year and all of us have had to overcome significant changes to the way we live our normal lives, including how we school, work, how we school our children, how we do social interactions. Everything has been different. And then this season particularly has been tough as we see cases of COVID on the rise and people are getting sick when we're told that we shouldn't spend Christmas with our families and we shouldn't gather. Now these things affect us all emotionally in different ways. Some of us are sad that we won't see our families this Christmas and some of us are maybe relieved that we won't have to see our families this year. And then everything in between there too. It's true, some aspects of Christmas are different this year, but our joy doesn't have to be. I know what you're thinking, there's no joy here. How could I possibly be joyful in this time? Believe me, I've had my own share of rough moments this year and this season too. Ironically, while trying to write this message and trying to practice what I'm about to preach, I have struggled finding joy but then I'm reminded that I do actually have reason to be joyful, which leads me to the passage of scripture that I would like to share with you today. It's not part of the traditional Christmas story, which is what makes this message a bit different from other years, but it is one that speaks to the reason for our joy and maybe how we should handle it. We'll be in Philippians 1, and I encourage you to open your Bibles, even if it's electronic. Read along and take notes. The passages will be on the screen, but there is something about opening your Bible and reading it yourself. It's like opening the door to God and inviting him to come in and connect with you. Before we read, will you pray with me? God, I am so grateful that you would choose someone like me to speak to your people, God. I'm humbled before you, God, and I pray that I would that I would convey your message to the people that you've brought here today, God. God, we confess as we come before you that sometimes we lose sight of our joy and we lose sight of you, God. And I want to I want to just come before you again, Lord, and just be reminded that you are the one. You are the creator of the universe, the one with a plan and the one who holds us in his hands. God, I relinquish control to you and I pray Lord that you would just fill me with joy this season help me to be mindful of all that you have in store for me God help me to be a light for you Lord I pray all of these things for your glory and your kingdom in Jesus name amen as I mentioned we will be in Philippians 1 while you're turning there I will tell you that I happen to like this little book of the Bible very much I have several notes written in here, and I just generally like the directness of Paul as he writes. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Here's a little prelude to the story. This passage of scripture is written by a man named Paul, previously named Saul. After Jesus' death, Paul is met by Jesus on the road to Damascus and is convicted. Because before that, Paul was locating people who believed in Jesus and was sentencing them to death for that belief. Then he was met by Jesus and he did a complete 180 and became a great 
advocate for Jesus, both preaching and defending the gospel. In fact, Paul becomes the writer of much of the New Testament as we know it. We're going to be reading out of Philippians, and this particular book is being written to the people of Philippi who have become Christians. Now, they are one of the early churches, and Paul would often write letters to them and other churches to help them, encourage them, and sometimes rebuke them. In this particular passage, Paul is reminding them of his troubles as he has been placed in chains for preaching and defending the gospel message. And yet, Paul's attitude remains positive despite his circumstances. In fact, he is telling the people of Philippi that his being in chains is advancing the gospel and emboldening other people to go and do the same. Then he goes on to share how people are preaching the gospel out of envy and rivalry and some out of goodwill. That's where we're going to pick up our reading. We'll start in verse 18. And it reads, But what does it matter? And he's talking about the motives in which people are preaching the gospel. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Now, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to jump down a couple passages because Paul just talks a little bit about death and whether he wants to die or not, but he concludes he's staying and and so he says this. In verse 27, we pick it up again. It says, Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed but, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. I'm going to stop there and talk about this because it leads me to these conclusions that I feel like we can apply to this season of our life. The first is this, reason for our joy. By that, I mean we know the reason for our joy. If you have been a Christian for any amount of time, you probably know that Jesus came as a small baby, grew up, remained sinless, and then he died and rose for us. If you're new to Christianity, that is the gist of the gospel. Now this message is being shared all across the world, and it is cause for great joy, and many people risk their lives even today to share it. For without the sacrifice of Jesus, there would not be hope of eternal life with God. In this passage, Paul is telling them not to worry about the motive for why the message is being spread, but he rejoices in the fact that it is being preached. So, whether the message is being spread by rivalry or love, rejoice that the message of Jesus is out there and that somehow you have heard it and you are here. Take joy in how it personally impacts you. Because if you have accepted Christ as your Savior and have surrendered your life to God, then you have great reason to be joyful. Paul was in some rough circumstances. Before his death, he experiences many, many, many trials. And yet, it doesn't stop him from sharing the good news or the joy that it brings with it. And he shares that with the world around him. We have the unique privilege that we live in a culture where it is generally accepted to share the gospel with someone else. And yet, many of us choose not to, or we're too scared to do so. 
But let me ask you this. What if we miss out on the opportunity to give someone else the joy of the Lord? Even subtly sharing the gospel by allowing Christ to be exalted in our bodies and in the way that we carry ourselves is a big deal. Hear this. People take notice of light in the darkness. Sure, Christmas is different this year, but we can still take the joy of the Lord with us as we shop, drive, and interact with people. We can be kinder, more gracious, smile under our masks, allow people to go before us, and the list could go on. For some of us, that looks like taking some time for ourselves to be filled with joy. And by that, I mean we need to take some quiet time to read our Bibles, pray, and connect with God, who is the giver of joy. We cannot properly pour out joy if we aren't full of it. Another way that I would say that is if there's no joy in us, it becomes increasingly difficult to spread joy. Which brings me to the next thing that I want to share. Remember our joy. I know this year has been so tough on all of us in vastly different ways, and pretty much everyone I have talked with is ready for this year to be over. I'm sure you can probably agree. One thing that I can say about this year and about this season is that it will be to us however we choose to remember it. I was talking with a friend this week and we talked about getting angry at other people's actions and how they affect us. Getting angry unnecessarily. And I, even if I'm not great at this myself, I firmly believe that one of the things that we have some control over is our joy. Will we allow people in the world to steal our joy, especially in this season that is supposed to be most joyful? There is a song that says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And it hit me recently that we sing and say things like this, but we don't always take it in and live it out. The truth of it is that this line is absolutely correct. At any point in our lives, good or bad, we can choose to remember the joy of the Lord and what his birth, his life, and his sacrifice meant for us. We can choose to be grateful for all the good things in our lives. A couple months back, my kids were talking to me in the car, and out of nowhere, my son proclaimed that COVID had ruined everything. I took the time to share with him that it might seem like that, and it might certainly feel that way sometimes, but we have the opportunity to look at some of the blessings that have come out of being quarantined and be grateful for those things. We then began to discuss those blessings and talk about how in the future we could more appropriately say something like, COVID has changed some things and made some things harder, but that we have been blessed. I realized then and am reminded frequently that this is something that I need to do more often. In order to remain positive and be a joy to the world, I have to make sure that I am taking the time to remember the things that bring me joy, to remember the reason for my joy. And in turn, praise God for it. I bet each of us could make a list of things that have been a blessing to us in this time. And if you do, I would love to hear about them, which leads me to my next thing. Joy into worship. In the Bible, we see many examples of joy overflowing human emotion and spilling out into worship. While we might have a rough time right now, it's important to remember that we are called to conduct ourselves in a manner that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. Let me be, here, let me be clear here. That does not mean that we have to always plaster a smile on our faces and pretend that our lives are perfect, which is good because my face does not lie. What we do need to do, though, is always be mindful of how we behave. 
I'm personally working on this and I frequently fail at it. And I tell my kids this all the time. You can have your emotions, but you have to be mindful of how those emotions are being conveyed. So for example, when my daughter gets her hopes up to watch a show, but I decide for her mental health and my own, it's probably better that she goes to bed. She can be sad about it, but she's not allowed to be rude to me because she is sad and didn't get her way. Now that's just one example of conducting ourselves in a way that is worthy of the gospel. And I'm sure each of us has a spot that God sometimes pokes us and reminds us about. God doesn't promise us an easy life. Even in verse 29, Paul is telling us that we are fortunate not just to believe on Jesus, but that we will also suffer for him. I know that may seem like an absurd idea and maybe not what you were expecting when you chose to believe or maybe not what you were expecting when your friend or your family member invited you to church, but it's the truth. Even with all of that, we still have the ability to find joy in our circumstances and then turn that joy into worship. Maybe this season, one of the differences is blasting that Christmas music in our homes and our cars and really tuning in to what the lyrics are saying, allowing it to become a time of worship. Sing and sing loud, even if other people are watching. Maybe they need to see some joy that has turned into worship in order to also have some joy. For we know that joy is one of those emotions that's contagious. For example, I've experienced this and so I can say, I know that even when I'm in a bad mood and things are not going my way, that if I hear my kids laugh, and not just some silly giggly laugh, but that one that I call a belly laugh, the one that comes from their belly and it's just their joy spilling over into laughter, that laugh. Every time I hear that laugh, it makes me laugh even if I have no idea what they're laughing about. It's just so full of joy that I can't help but catch some of it. Yes, Christmas is different this year. So let's try to be different from the rest of the world right now. First, by focusing on the reason for our joy, then remembering our joy, and then letting that joy become worship. This year has been a challenge, and it is most certainly different. I hope that as we continue our approach to Christmas, that we will find more reasons for joy and that we will try to make the best of the rest of this year and live it fully with all the joy that we possibly can. In fact, as a bonus challenge, after adjusting our own perspectives, perhaps we can help spread some joy this season. Maybe we can help people to not only find joy, but also hope, peace, and love this Christmas season. Don't be afraid to share the joy of the Lord. Paul was in chains and he still managed to have joy and share the gospel message. We're not in physical chains. We're just in quarantine or under stay-at-home orders. But we can still be like Paul. <laughs> Funny enough, every time I think of that, it reminds me of one of those silly memes. Uh, the ones that say, so-and-so does this, be like them. Well, here it is. This is Paul. Paul remained joyful despite circumstances and still shared the gospel. Be like Paul. All joking aside, as we close out this service, I want to thank you for being here with us today. I hope this message spoke to you and reached you where it was needed. Sometimes I think we need a reminder to shift our focus to the right things in order to be able to get through the tough things. If you're struggling this holiday season, I want to let you know that we have regular Zoom meetings to hang out, connect, and chat. We'd love for you to join us in those. We also have a virtual gathering after this on Sundays at 11.30 via our Facebook Live. Just look for our Crossroads Facebook page. We hope that you can join in on some of these things. I also want to let you know that your staff is always available to you to chat. 
You can always email us at the office email address or contact us individually. We care for you and we want to help bring joy to you as well. I'm so glad that you were able to join us today. We have one more song to sing, and I hope that as we move into this last song, we find joy in it. Christmas is different this year, but we can still be full of joy. Let that out and praise God in this time. Will you pray with me? God, thank you so much for the joy of the Lord. Thank you for bringing that to us, and God, I pray for each of us that we are fuller, fuller this week as we go out into the world and as we try and be the best light to the world that we possibly can. God, we confess that our lives feel difficult right now, God, but we surrender to you and we know, God, that you are the one in control. Thank you for bringing us joy and hope and love and peace. God, you are so good to us. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing here today, and we pray blessing on us today, Lord, and we pray that we be a blessing for you, Lord. I pray all these things for your glory, for your kingdom, and in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for joining us. I'm so glad that you were here with us today. We'll see you at our live Facebook gathering. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you are being blessed during this Christmas season. My name is Sean Summers, the assistant pastor, and this is my wife, Sarah. And we wanted to sing the, this medley of two well-known Christmas carols, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen and Carol of the Bells. And our hope is that you would join and sing with us, but even if you don't, we hope that you will be ushered into this season by these songs and be able to connect with God through their lyrics. So would you join us if you are ready? And if not, just listen and enjoy. Sound for Hill and Dale, tell me the tale. Give me the ring while people 
sing songs of the cheer Christmas is Merry, 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 merry Christmas Merry, 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 merry Christmas Thank you so much for joining us for this virtual service. Again, I pray that you have been blessed by this song. I pray that you have been blessed by being part of our church. And if you uh, would like to join us financially, there are several ways to do that on the screen below. And I thank everyone who has participated, who has joined us financially and been supporting us through this COVID season. If you're watching this on a Sunday morning at 11.30, I want you to know that we do a Facebook Live gathering, and I would love for everybody to join us. It's such a great way to share praises, share prayer requests, share what we're doing to, uh, for the day, share what our week is going to look like, and um, share in what being the church means like means. I pray that you would join us in making this Christmas season one that's filled with joy for us, for our families, for the people that we meet. And even though you know, it's going to look a lot different than it has in years past, we still have the hope of Jesus Christ and his birth to celebrate. So go forth from here and carry that hope and that joy in everything that you do. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a blessed day and a blessed week.